Hello and welcome to this video where we will be going through the full installation of the water cooling kit for the MAG 8200 Lawnmower Blade Sharpener. This video we're going to begin with already having the stand fully complete. If you are not at this point already, you can go back and watch the stand assembly video. The first step we need to do is to prepare the shelf that will be holding the water tank. So what we'll need to do with that is put four bolts in each one of the corners. And it's, in ver it's very important to note that the heads of the bolt are on the inside of the tray. If you have the nut on the inside of the tray, the tank will not fit in here. It's a real nice snug fit. So make sure you have the bolts on the inside. So I've done three of them already. We'll do the last one here real quick. And it's 5 16th hardware, so you'll need a half inch wrench. Now we've got the shelf ready, and I've got my three bolts to connect it to the column uh, ready here as well. So now we'll lift the stand up here to give you a little bit better view. We can access the bolting points uh, from the bottom of the stand, and keep in mind too, the shelf shares one of the bolts that hold the column together. So we'll need to remove one bolt before we can install the shelf. The tank shelf has to be on the lowest position of the three bolt hole pattern that is on all four sides of the column. And the shelf is also located on the opposite side of where the balancer is because the, the tank has to be under the grit guard. Now that we have the shelf on, we can set the stand back down. I'll draw your attention to the, the large four holes here in the bottom of the tank shelf. That's where we will bolt the tank to the shelf a little bit later. Okay, now the next step after having the tank shelf assembled to the stand is to now add the water tray or the catch tray to the top of the stand itself. So we'll pull that up here from behind. Here's the large water catch tray that the sharpener will set into later. So make sure you've got that handy. There will also be two splash guards, basically a front and a rear. You'll also find in the kit some small little angle nuts and then you'll have four rubber feet. And I want you to pay close attention to these rubber feet because one is a little thinner, one is a little fatter. The fatter one will be at the backside of the tray and the narrower one will be uh, towards the front where the liquid will exit. So we do that to create pitch so that the water or cutting fluid will run to the exit drain. The next step is actually physically connecting the water tray to the stand. We'll need a little 1 8 Allen head wrench, a 3 8 wrench, and of course the caulk that we supplied in the water cooling kit. So we'll start by putting those rubber feet on, and one nice thing is because the caulk is a, a bit sticky, we'll use it to stick the rubber feet on in place where we need them to be. So I find it easiest to just take the rubber foot and you can take the caulk and just put a nice, nice bead around the whole rubber foot and then you can stick it in and immediately line up the hole as you're looking down. And again, 
we're taking the short feet and we're putting them closest to the exit port because again we're building pitch so that the water drains. Here we'll do some of the rear feet now. And what's important too is if you can line up these holes right away, it'll make it real easy when we lower this down onto the stand. So we'll come around here. And now we wanna look, there are holes in the corners. It's easiest to line up the front ones. So you'll take a look at those and bring the feet right down onto those holes and you can set the tray there. So now we'll take our button head screws along with our nylock nuts and start affixing the tray to the tabletop. Come up from the bottom. You may need to wiggle around a little bit to locate and locate and get through the hole. Just start each one. That'll also help you align. Okay, we've got them all started and grab the wrench and now we can torque them down and you can certainly watch. You would like to see the threads engaged in the nylock, but keep in mind you don't have to mushroom or squeeze the rubber foot real hard. Basically, once you see the threads cut into the nylon of the nylock nut, that is essentially where you can stop. Okay, now the water tray is connected to the tabletop and we'll take our caulk again and we're gonna caulk around each one of the nuts. And you don't have to make this super thick, but you know, go all the way around the nut and just push it around with your finger a little bit. Now, we'll reinforce the rear corners with the zinc plated angle nuts in your kit. So we'll take both of those and they go in the back two corners here. And this is where you'll need the number 10 self tapping screws. If you wanna make this a little bit easier on yourself, if you like, you can first run the self tapping screw through the hole to kind of first cut the threads. And then it'll be easier to put them uh, into the corners. Otherwise they can twist a little bit on you when you're first um, cutting the threads. So that's a quick little tip there. So we will take the caulk again and we're gonna nicely fill this corner and around the holes. And you can be pretty generous in the corners here because we really wanna make sure those are sealed. Wipe the caulk up the seam and then just put the excess in, right in the corner. You can just put it all around the backs of the uh, screws and clean your finger off that way. Then we'll do our next back corner. And again, this tube will be more than enough, so don't feel like you have to um, be sparing with the caulk. You'll have plenty for the full installation of the tube that we provide. Now we have the splash guards. So the larger one is the one that will be in the front and you'll see here very quickly. So again, we'll take the caulk and generously fill up the corner. And then we'll grab the rear splash guard here, which is the smaller one. And again, the caulk in the corner. And I'll run again a little bead along the front. Okay. 
Okay, now we've completed all the points that we have to caulk for the water tray. The splash guards are in place, the rear reinforcement angles are in place, and each nut is caulked as well. When we get to the point of actually setting the sharpener into the machine, the rubber feet of the MAG-8200 will sit on top of each one of these nuts. That's what locates it. And then it will get two screws in the back and two screws in the front through the grit guard, which we'll get to next. The next step is going to be connecting the grit guard and assembling that to the splash guards. Now the grit guard sides and the grit guard itself will share some holes, primarily the side two with the splash guards. So I find it easiest to first take the grit guard top itself and then the grit guard sides and put in the top screw. So this is the top of the unit. We're going to do this screw up here. That way the grit guard sides are already attached to the grit guard top. And then make sure you've got the bottom two holes aligned before you tighten that. And we're aligned, so now we have the grit guard. Again, having these side holes open because they're shared with the splash guards. Now, since we still have plenty of caulk, we can do another bead along the bottom of the grit guard. Now, generally the water is always running downward, so this isn't absolutely necessary, but we have the extra caulk and why not? So we can run a bead on both sides of the splash guards where the grit guard connect. So we'll run that bead up here. And now what I think is easiest is have two of the self-tapping screws with you when you take the grit guard. And when you align the grit guard between the two, lower it in between. And there are two holes on the bottom here that we can start. And that'll make it, it'll make it a lot easier to align and you won't have to worry about um, holding something up. So we've got those two tight. So now we can deal with just driving in the last of the screws. And so we'll have two on the back side here that I'll do first. This connects the splash guard, of course, to the grit guard itself. Now you'll notice I wasn't totally square there, depending on what le length extension you have. You may want a 5 16th wrench to do the bottom one because the splash guard, or at least to finish tightening it, because the splash guard does get in the way of longer uh, extensions depending on what tool you're using, if you're using a, a ratchet or if you're using a driver like I was. So we'll hand tighten this bottom one. All right, now with the grit guard and the splash guards in place onto the water tray, which is now connected to the stand, we have our tank shelf in place we are ready to set our sharpener in the water tray. Our next step is to prepare the sharpener for the stand. So if you purchased your 8200 as a water-cooled unit from the factory, you would already have the plumbing installed. We would do that at the factory for you. If you purchased the water cooling system as a kit or an add-on later, you'll have to install it. We're gonna do that step now so that everybody can see it. So the first thing we want to start with is taking off the front cover. And here you'll also see this is our belt grinder version of the 8200. You'll get a quick demonstration here of how easy it is to take the belt off or to change a belt. You simply use the angle adjustment and that allows you to then take the spring tension off and slip the belt off. So belt changes are, are very easy. 
we'll want to take the contact wheel off because that'll make installing the grit guard or connecting to the grit guard easier later, as well as it just gives us a lot more room to work. So I'm taking off the arbor nut. And then now you'll notice right down here there is a knockout that if you are again updating an 8200 into a water cooling machine, you'll push that knockout out to make it look like this. So that's that hole down here. Now since I have a fresh part here, we're going to install the plumbing on there so it's a little easier to see. The two parts of the plumbing are the nozzle that delivers the coolant to the abrasive and the valve and then connection to the tank and pump. This part, you'll want the nozzle on the inside and the smooth face is the outside and you'll thread these two together. And you can go so far by hand and then you'll need a 7 8 wrench And you'll want to note the orientation, so we'll start getting that since I'm getting closer to tight. And so these parts just sandwich down onto the steel plate. And then all these sections of the nozzle are can all swivel, so you can simply just turn that the right way back the way it was. You just want to try and get this portion level. So now we'll set this over here and we'll tip the machine back so you can see how to remove this part. It's these two number 10s right here. So we'll set that one aside and we'll take the one here. Now you won't have a great view of this, but we're going to slip this part of the hose underneath the motor. So you can turn the barb sideways and there's plenty of clearance just to get right under the motor. And then once you're there, we'll align our holes. And you can see now the plumbing is all installed. And we can adjust the nozzle. That's all adjustable to how, where you'd prefer to have it. And that completes the plumbing installation for the MAG 8200. We're ready to mount this onto the water tray. And one thing to note as well, uh, these sectional pieces of the nozzle can be purchased at magnematic.com. Uh, if you'd like more sections or if you'd like a different type of nozzle um, or you'd like to have a little bit different flow, we have options available there at our site. And just a quick recap with a little bit closer view. Here's our valve with our hose going underneath the motor and our connection to the bottom steel plate that we had taken out and our adjustable nozzle for the coolant flow. Now we're ready to place the sharpener onto the water tray. Uh, if you remember earlier in the video, I did mention that the rubber feet are going to locate on top of the nuts here that we caulked, okay? That's our location point. Now. I do recommend that you tie up the cord and then tuck it either around the light or, or somewhere on top so that you're not tripping over the cord when you're moving the machine. Also, it's not a bad idea to just have a hand, someone give you a hand. So the unit is about 90 pounds. Looks like we are on all the rubber feet. They are all located. Now we're ready to unpack the tank and get it ready to install onto the stand. So we have the tank here. First, we'll take the cap off. So this cap, you'll just pull right off of the filter sock. There's a metal ring. It sits into here quite nicely. 
this cap you'll want to hang on to. This is just for winter storage. So of course, uh, one thing to note about that is the coolant does have a little bit lower freezing point than water. However, it will freeze. And so if you're in a climate that uh, you do get freezing temperatures, you'll want to be able to bring this tank in um, during the winter months when it's not in use into a heated building. So let's take the filter sock out. This is the sock that will catch all the debris from grinding. Inside there will be some packaging paper. A section of tubing, which we can right away connect to the tank. And then also inside you will find a refractometer. That's for testing the concentration of the coolant. And the last thing is the hardware to bolt the tank to the water tray or to the shelf on the stand. And then one thing you should also do is, because things can come loose in shipping, there's another section of tubing inside the tank that goes to the pump. You'll want to look at the pump and just make sure that that is still connected. And in the corner of the tank, and it is, so that's, that's fantastic, we're ready there. So first thing we'll do is we'll take our hardware, and you'll want a half inch wrench or socket. And we'll set the tank into the tray. Place a washer on the bolt. And the bottom of the tank is threaded, but keep in mind it is plastic, so this is not a bolt you want to put a lot of torque on. Another thing to notice the orientation of where we place the tank is that the cord and the uh, connection of the tubing here is on this side because we'll be coming up over there. And two, if you find that your tank is not fitting, you may have put the nut inside of the corners of the tank shelf where the nuts, they have to be on the outside. The bolt head is on the inside, otherwise there won't be enough clearance for the tank to sit down. So we'll get the rest of these bolts in and just start first just with a finger tightening. Now we'll start making connections between the tank and the machine. We'll start with the exit drain. So take your filter sock and your spiral hose. You can stuff the filter sock into the tank and use your arm to push it down. And so that reaches the bottom of the tank. There is a pull handle in here for taking it out when it is full of debris. So set that off to the side a little bit. Then push the yellow hose into the filter sock. And lastly, bring it up to the flange on the drain. And it is a tight fit, but it does slide right on. And so now we've got our exit drain done. Next, we'll connect the power cord to the back of the sharpener. There's an outlet in the back of the sharpener which is controlled by this switch. And then we'll take our plumbing that we had installed earlier and grab that barb, bring the hose up from the tank and simply slip that over. And you'll have a retention loop to place over the hose And you can compress that a little bit so it stays where you, where you placed it. And then get your number 10 screws again. There are two connections between the water tray and the yellow base of the sharpener. We'll use this one here 
and share it with the water retention loop here to keep the hose in place. And there's another one under the motor here. So now the rear of the sharpener is connected to the water tray. Our next point of connection is between the yellow frame of the sharpener and the grit guard. You'll need two number 10 button head screws and there will be two nylock nuts. For wrenches, you'll need a 1 8 Allen and a 3 8 uh, box wrench. When putting this nut in, or this bolt, excuse me, the button head needs to be on the inside of the yellow frame. If you try to put the nut inside, there won't be enough clearance for the grinding wheel or belt. Now that we've made all of our connections between the water tray and the sharpener, the tank, both uh, plumbing to deliver the coolant as well as the drain for the dirty coolant to go into the filter sock, I want to make a little note to you about uh, the filling and what we're going to do next. Now, in the next part of the video, we'll be filling the tank with five gallons of water and about a half gallon of the coolant. That's a normal mix that would give you the proper concentration, which you can always check with your refractometer. However, that's the maximum you would ever want to put into the tank, and it gives you the largest amount of cooling battery, let's call it, okay? So if you're doing a very heavy amount of sharpening, where you're sharpening for, you know, hours long, you want a greater volume of water to keep cooling down the sharpening that you're doing to, sh to cool those blades that you're sharpening. So you want a lot of volume to keep that temperature down. Now, if you're not as heavy of a user, you can use a lesser amount in the tank. You could keep three or four gallons in there and then use, of course, a little bit less coolant. You would then slowly add the coolant and continually check your um, concentration with your refractometer and get to that uh, about three bricks level or 3.3 and we'll have a separate video on the use of the refractometer. And now we're ready to add some water to the system. We're gonna put in two gallons to start, first of all, to check all of our seals through the caulking that we had done earlier, as well as just to test the pump, because of course it's gonna be a lot easier to dispose of some water if we have a problem someplace, rather than adding the coolant to it now. So first, just a check. And again, normal tap water is just fine. So we'll start adding the water here. And do keep in mind, uh, you also have the four leveling feet on the stand to create pitch as well, uh, both left to right and front to back. A lot of times you'll want to bias it still a little bit more so you get more pitch that the water runs away quicker, as well as you can always pitch the stand, again, depending on your liking, a little you know, fr front to back. Um, depending on how your blades are and how the water runs off the work table. All right, there's the first gallon. And so far I'm looking around here and I think we did a good job on the caulking. I don't see any problems any place. And that's enough that the pump is submerged. So we'll set that gallon off to the side. Now, we'll need to plug the sharpener into the wall. And the cord that came off of the pump plugs into the back of the sharpener. You'll find an outlet on the sharpener and that's what's controlled by the blue switch. So we have our valve open and we can turn our blue switch on and check if the pump is functioning. And there we have it. So the pump is functioning. And again, here you can control your flow with the valve. And if you would need to real quickly, you could, you could shut it off here or also up here. Now let's get a little bit more water and fill up the rest of the tank. I'm now adding the last gallon of water. We did two off camera just to speed up the process so you don't have to just watch uh, water pouring into the system. And so here's the last gallon of water. 
And now we'll bring our coolant over. And again, you want to use about half of the coolant. And again, you can pour that right into the machine here the same way. And now we're ready for another quick test of the system. So we'll turn on the blue switch again. And we'll let that run for a little bit to cycle the coolant and mix it all. Now we can put the contact wheel back on. And the arbor nut, which again, remember, is a left-handed thread. So you'll notice I'm going counterclockwise to get it on. We'll take our spanner wrench and just snug it. You don't have to torque this a lot. You can just hang on to the wheel and just torque a little bit. Just snug. Then we'll take our belt and we'll place that back on. That slips right over. And then again, we'll use the crank handle for the angle adjustment to put the spring pressure back on and checking that we get low enough. Now you'll want to watch for interference, not that you're grinding the bottom of your water cooling nozzle. So you'll want to look down there and adjust that and bring ourselves down to our 30 degree angle there. And we've got a good position for the nozzle. So that's finished there. We'll place the safety guard back on the front. Close the clamps. And we are now finished installing the water cooling kit or assembling your water cooled MAG 8200. Thanks for watching.